In July 2018, there were reports in the media about the shooting of a polar bear in Spitsbergen by the crew of a tourist vessel cruising the shores of this barren, inhospitable island in the Arctic. There was outrage in social media about how a bunch of well-heeled tourists seeking new experiences in a remote area of the world could be so venal and selfish as to trigger the death of a member of this iconic endangered species by intruding into its natural habitat in search of the ultimate shot of a polar bear, not by a bullet, but with a long lensed camera. The truth is more complex and more nuanced, as I am to discover as I set out with some misgivings to join a similar voyage one month later. The ship that will take us on our voyage around Svalbard is moored at the jetty in Longyearbyen Harbour. It is a small expedition vessel converted from an oceanographic research ship and has an ice-strengthened hull. We cast off and head west along the Advent Fjorden and into the sunset. In the delicate arctic morning light of another day, we arrive on a beach that at first seems deserted, but there are beasties about. We are at Pulipunten, a favourite walrus haul-out location. And guess what? A group of males are sunning themselves on the shingle. On the northwest corner of Spitsbergen is the Smirnberg Fjord. The fjord culminates in the Smirnberg Breen, a massive glacier. On a good day, the voyage into the Smirnberg Fjord provides glorious views of mountains emerging from the fog banks and the clouds.
fjord terminates in the impressive ice cliff of the Smirnberg Breen. We deploy into Zodiacs for a close-up view of the ice cliff. There is a seal in front of me, between me and the ice. A bearded seal is spotted swimming below the edge of the glacier. The ice around the base of glaciers is a favourite location for Arctic seals to nest and rear their young, as the glacial ice provides a reliable platform for the young to be weaned, even after the retreat of the winter sea ice. This also makes it a good hunting ground for polar bears, who rely on catching seal pups for the majority of their food intake, especially the bears with young cubs, who emerge hungry from their winter retreats after weaning their cubs through the winter. The bears have a good chance of catching the young seals near the ice, but once the seal pups have learned how to detect danger and escape into the water, the bears have less chance of an easy meal. There are no polar bears around here today. Just beyond the northwest tip of Spitsbergen is the Raj Fjord. As we enter the fjord, we sight a pair of blue whales, a mother and her calf. It is a rare privilege to see the largest animal ever known to have lived on Earth at peace in its natural environment. We make a landing at Alishamna in a secluded bay in the fjord. A few hours earlier, on the way in, a couple of tired, hungry bears were spotted on a barren hillside, hundreds of miles from the nearest sea ice that should be their summer retreat. The Arctic code for visiting expeditions is to avoid any direct confrontation with polar bears. Any beach landing must be checked out by an advance party and the site secured in case of any unexpected visitors. So our crew are armed with rifles, just in case. There is an old hut on the shoreline, erected centuries earlier by whalers. On a promontory beyond is a cairn, erected by Basque whalers from northern Spain, probably the first seaman to ever venture this far north. The weather is at first torrid, with scudding cloud and icy rain, but then the squall blows over and a scene of pristine beauty is revealed in the Arctic sunlight. Further round to the northwest tip of Spitsbergen is the Leif de Fjord, a deep fjord running south with fingers cutting west and south into valleys between the mountains. In one of the southern fingers of the Leif de Fjord is the Bok Fjord. With no bears around, we make a zodiac landing on a beach called Jotungjeldain. 
This seal, spotted just off the beach, would be safe from a bear anyway. There is no ice platform from where a bear could launch an attack, and the seal could easily outswim any bear trying to reach it from the shore. The red sandstone mountains on the east side of the fjord are dusted with the first snow of autumn. On the beach, as well as plastic detritus, there are hewn tree trunks that must have floated up to Spitsbergen from the tropics on the Gulf Stream. There are no trees in Spitsbergen. Equally unexpected is this jellyfish, probably a periphyla, that has spread northwards from Norway within the last few years. Between the main island of Spitsbergen and the most northeasterly island of the Svalbard archipelago, Nordalslandet, is the Hinlopen Strait. Not so long ago, the strait was icebound, even in high summer, but now it is ice free. We head south into the Hinlopen Strait. Halfway through the Hinlopen Strait, there is a pebble beach known as Torelneset, which is a popular spot for walruses. The walruses are indeed in residence. The plan is for us to land to watch them at closer quarters, but this is quickly cancelled when an emaciated polar bear is spotted approaching the walrus colony. The bear is starving and desperate for food. It must have been attracted after scenting the walruses. An adult walrus weighs around 2,000 kilograms, whereas even the largest polar bear weighs only about 700 kilograms. This three to one weight difference, plus the lethal potential of the walrus's tusks, means that the starving bear has little chance of catching an adult walrus. Even catching a pup is unlikely when approached over dry land, with a pup surrounded by protective adults. The bear retreats, looking for walrus poo to eat along the high tide mark instead. If we had landed, the desperate polar bear could have attacked us. At around 100 kilograms at most, with no tusks, us humans would have been an easier target. The bear had been stranded on land with no sea ice within hundreds of miles to move to, where it would have stood more chance of catching a passing seal. As we turn about and head north into the Arctic Ocean in search of the sea ice, the polar bear's natural summertime environment, I ponder a much quoted statistic in tourist brochures. There are more polar bears than people living on Svalbard, about 2,000 people versus 3,000 bears. My subsequent internet investigations conclude that this is misleading, as the bears included in this number are those resident in the entire Svalbard region. This region covers not only the main Svalbard archipelago, but also the Barents Sea, which encompasses Franz Josef Land. Research sources estimate that there are only about 250 bears that are resident along the coastline of mainland Svalbard and the claim that they outnumber the human population has not been true for a very long time. Dolphins accompany us as we head north. As we emerge from the lee of Spitsbergen and enter the Arctic Ocean, we are hit by the wind and swells of a summer storm.
by the next day, the storm has passed and we cruise into a wintry landscape in the high Arctic with freezing temperatures and snow flurries. I continue my reflections on the plight of the Svalbard polar bears. The reason why even 250 polar bears remain in Spitsbergen in the summer months is a point of conjecture. Scientists have various explanations and climate change is not the only one. They suggest that there are many other natural causes for a bear to be in poor condition and to blame every such instance on the retreating sea ice is misguided. It is possible that the remaining polar bears on Spitsbergen are casualties of their own poor judgment. They may have failed to make a timely return to the retreating sea ice due to lack of experience or due to competition from other stronger bears for a hunting range out on the ice. Polar bears rely on good sea ice conditions at the right time and the right place to gain access to their favourite prey, the ringed seal. Scientific papers suggest that pregnant female bears need a sea ice covering of at least 60% in order to travel back to preferred wintering areas where they can make their dens and to give birth. What is true is that the summer ice has retreated over recent decades, albeit not in a consistent manner. The northern tip of Svalbard is about 80 degrees north. Our ship is now around 82 degrees north. These plots from the Norwegian Meteorological Institute show the difference between the edge of the summer solid sea ice shown in red in 2008 and 2018. In 2008, it extended down to the northeastern coast of Svalbard, whereas in 2018, it was over 200 kilometers away to the north. Nature is very resilient, and polar bears are adaptable. The center of the polar bear population has shifted eastwards towards Franz Josef Land, where the winter sea ice remains more extensive as this plot for January 2019 shows. The pregnant females are still assured of gaining landfall in Franz Josef Land at the onset of winter and locating their dens in a place where there will still be nearby sea ice next spring when they emerge from their dens to catch seals for nurturing their young. Later in the day we encounter the pack ice. We are at last truly in the domain of the polar bear in the high Arctic. through the pack ice for about half an hour, we encounter a polar bear in its natural late summer habitat, the Arctic Ocean ice flows. It is a young male. As the bear pads across the pack ice, the ice slabs undulate in the ocean's swell. It keeps downwind of our vessel, so it can smell if we are friend or foe. It senses a possible spot to make a hole in the ice to catch a seal. It is a healthy animal, no shortage of body weight, and in good condition.
As this lone polar bear roams across its domain, I am struck by the solitary nature of its adult life. We move on and our ship gingerly picks its way through the ice flows, avoiding any slabs that have compacted to rise up into a significant obstacle. These waters are rich in food for Arctic seabirds. Kittiwake, ivory gulls and guillemots fish in the open water between the ice flows. As the pack ice closes in, we are about as far north as we can safely go without the risk of becoming stuck. We are at over 82 degrees 45 minutes north. We encounter another couple of polar bears. This time, a mother and her year old cub. The cub dutifully follows her mother as she negotiates the sea ice. In the unending Arctic twilight of late summer, we encounter a final polar bear in this silent, icy wilderness. This time, a young female.
The Arctic is changing faster than the Antarctic under the influence of global climate change. It is a profound experience to gaze out onto the silent expanse of the Arctic sea ice, one of Earth's most iconic remaining wildernesses. I wonder for how many decades longer it will be possible to do this in the light of the Arctic summer sun.